Well, good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, and welcome to this month virtual fireside with uh, the Boiler Engineers. Uh, I'm uh, Meng Chen, the uh, Johnny Everson Dean of College of Engineering, and proud to be able to bring on this uh, beautiful spring break day here in West Lafayette two, not just one, this time for the first time and after a whole year of doing this monthly series, we are honored with two uh, outstanding boiler makers. Uh, and I'm going to introduce them in a minute. But first, I just want to let you know that uh, even though uh, last uh, Sunday night uh, didn't go quite as we planned on the basketball front, uh, our baseball, uh, I was told, remain undefeated, the only one undefeated baseball team in the United States. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> starting this Friday, uh, we go NCAA. Uh, by the way, for a brief period of time, uh, Purdue and Stanford on the women basketball front, we on the men's basketball front, uh, were the only two universities with both top five basketball team and top five engineering college. <laughs> with that as the opening, my distinct honor, pleasure to introduce Liz Thompson, Don Thompson. Liz is class of 1985, ECE and Don, class of 1984, and currently also trustee at Purdue University. I'm going to turn the mic to Liz and Don to introduce themselves. Hi, Dean. It's such a pleasure. Um, Liz Thompson, as, as you just mentioned, uh, class of 1985 in the School of Electrical Engineering, uh, where I met the young man who would uh, change my life forever back on the first day on campus. So it is a pleasure to be here with you and very excited to be here with two of our Thompson scholars as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Don Thompson and uh, I am proudly, proudly called Mr. Liz Thompson, <laughs> uh, graduate of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering in 1984 and have served as a trustee for the last, I guess, about 11 years, uh, and a very, very proud Boilermaker. And I, too, am extremely happy that we have the stars of the show here with us, Mung, and we've got Jordan and Jasmine, who are two of the Thompson Scholars, and uh, they're the ones that really uh, carry the day forward here for us. The real stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, we'll introduce the Thompson Scholar representatives uh, by the time we get to the half an hour point. Uh, and uh, let me start, however, by uh, going back to uh, the early 1980s here on Purdue campus. Well, Liz, you alluded to that already. So how did you two meet? By oh, the way, I'm God. asking this because <laughs> uh, our president, Mitch Daniels, as you know, you know, is freezing tuition. So I'm looking for a revenue source, one of which is I intend to send a bill, a finder's fee to all the <laughs> Boilermaker couples. <laughs> we saw each other on campus, got married, grew a beautiful family together, and yeah. I want to uh, just uh, you know get like 10, 12 percent uh, <laughs> of their lifelong uh, earnings. Uh, well, well, I know there are a lot of us out there, so you may be onto something there. I'm not sure. <laughs> How did you two meet? So I will take you back to August of 1980, and Don and I were at a welcome reception. Uh, we had both received, what was it, honey, Amoco scholarships at the time. And yep. so I Standard think oil. Yep. That, Standard Oil, we were seated at the same table. Uh, I think it was a $500 uh, scholarship. And I looked across the table and I thought, ooh, who is this very handsome uh, young man sitting across the table from me? But being very young, I was 16 at the time when I started Purdue. Don was only 17 at the time. It wasn't my focus. And so we had some small chit chat. Um, we didn't really say anything much to each other. And I didn't even see him again the entire first semester on campus. Fast forward to January 1981. We were in the E129 lecture hall in Calculus 162. And I looked up and I said, hold on. That's the same young man I remember from the first night on campus. I finally got up the nerve. This is where our stories diverge. I finally got the nerve to sit next to him in class come March and the conversation went a little like this. I said, so where are you originally from? And he said, Chicago. And I said, where in Chicago? Cause I'm from the North side. And he said, from the North side of Chicago. And I said, well, what street did you grow up on? And he said, 
small street, you wouldn't know the name of it, but it's called Cleveland Avenue. And Dean, I grew up on Cleveland Avenue as well. So mm -hmm. the same street, four mm -hmm. blocks apart, it mm -hmm. took Purdue to bring us together. Mm -hmm. And we've been together ever since. And it's the anniversary we celebrate March 26th, 10 days from now, where we will celebrate our 41st anniversary together. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank that you. is an amazing story, I have to say. I see Cleveland Avenue, the Foundation for Education, right behind you, Liz. I want yeah. to ask you a question about that. Uh, but first, let me ask uh, Don to tell us uh, his version of the story. <laughs> You know, I, I think she's largely correct. However, I think it was me who saw her first. Yeah. And it just took us a while to get together. But we're not going to debate this because Jasmine, Zell, Kendall, and Jordan, they know the truth. We've had this conversation together. Um, but it, I will say it this way, Mom. It has been, um, she is my best friend, uh, the joy of my life. And uh, we, we, we basically lived our lives together. And yeah. so... Uh, Purdue brought us together, uh, and we now have a chance to still, within the realms of that whole Purdue experience, get a chance to talk to some fabulous people to try to help them uh, keep moving through life as well. Mm, well, Liz and Don, you two are really the role models as the Boilermakers couples. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. And Well, Don, you know, a lot of people ask me this question, say, you know, we know that uh, Don Thompson's a wildly successful business leader in America. Uh, now, he was an electrical engineer at Purdue. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a tough major, and both of you are. But how did Don Thompson uh, later turn out to be the CEO of McDonald's? How did that well, happen? Well, it, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting story, and I tell everyone, you know, the biggest thing and the best thing about Purdue is Purdue teaches you how to problem solve. And um, so, yeah, I, I will say the first part of this, I probably won't fare as well with my problem solving skills, but the latter part, I think it turned out okay. I was in the defense industry. I was working for Northrop at the time. It wasn't Northrop Grumman. It was just Northrop at the time. And as a, uh, a defense contractor, I was working as a power supply uh, engineer, uh, enjoying it tremendously. Um, and, uh, however, there were some things that occurred relative to the industry. And as one of the leaders, uh, I ended up doing downsizing of some of our team. And after you've done that a few times with people, it impacts you. And I was looking for something different and I got a call from someone. And, uh, during a call, uh, he says, uh, I never forget it. He says, how would you like to come and, and, and look at our company? And it would be in the areas of control circuitry. You'll be doing a lot of feedback loop dynamics and helping us to be able to optimize some of the system. And I'm saying, wow, this is right up my alley. Perfect. You know, ECE background. I'd love to do this. So when should I come to St. Louis for the interview? And that was quiet on the other side of the phone. And uh, he then said, he said, St. Louis. I said, sure. St. Louis, that's where McDonnell Douglas is. And he said, no, this is uh, not McDonnell Douglas. He said, this is uh, McDonald's hamburgers. <laughs> and I quickly said, well, you've probably got the wrong guy. Thank you very much, but no thank you. Uh, but as God would have it, a few circumstances occurred. Liz and I thought about it, prayed on it. And the next thing I know, I have spent uh, I had spent 25 years with McDonald's and ultimately uh, ending up being the CEO of a fabulous company. Uh, yes. Well, you know, um, those aerospace defense companies, they really need to avoid brand names that we all recognize. <laughs> it can be confusing. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, McDonald, of course, is one of the most visible brands in the whole world and uh, one of the largest companies in the world. And as you, the CEO of the uh, such a large enterprise, uh, how did your Purdue engineering education connect into leading this uh, humongous enterprise? Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I think most companies are, and I always look at it this way, most companies are, are just living organisms. Uh, from what they do and the products they serve, the goods and services um, that they provide, there's always a stream and a series of processes that help them get from the beginning all the way to the end and a conversion to provide services to some end client or customer. And, and McDonald's is absolutely no different. And what Purdue really helped more than anything else with was just how you follow that chain and problem solve along that chain. And whether that was related to people-based matters, 
whether that was in electrical engineering in my uh, first career, or whether that was related to markets and market dynamics, uh, product analytics, product mix shifts across the world, whether it was relative to whether or not we put $2 million into product development or $20 million in, whether we opened 20 restaurants in China or do we open those six restaurants in Russia. It was all part of problem solving. And uh, that was the benefit of, of having a Purdue degree. Mm, yes. Well, you know, uh, I think that McDonough, uh, along with maybe Disney, are probably the two best examples of what systems engineering at best mm -hmm. would look like, right? Mm -hmm. It's an amazing experience that uh, you had there, I'm sure, leading McDonald's. Now, when you and Liz hosted me kindly three and a half years ago in Chicago, uh, and uh, I learned about your current ventures and also about the Cleveland uh, Avenue. So I'd love to hear more about that from you and Liz. Go ahead, honey, you start first. Well, Cleveland Avenue, and Liz says this best, she says Cleveland Avenue and the Cleveland Avenue Foundation for Education are really two different expressions of the same intention, uh, which is we basically support entrepreneurs and people who are doing things to better the world. Whether that's on the Cleveland Avenue side, which you know I focus on, which is our venture capital side uh, in terms of foods, uh, beverages, technology-based service systems that impact consumer retail. Uh, we like to say we're in the lifestyle investment side of the world. And so we look at venture capital um, and where we place that venture capital. We make big bets on entrepreneurs. Uh, we make big bets on entrepreneurs of all colors and gender. So we have funds focused on, again, food and beverage, funds focused on technology, and funds that are focused on advancing women and people of color, entrepreneurs of color, particularly uh, black and Latina entrepreneurs. We look very strongly at how we can advance them and how we can advance women in the field of venture capital. So uh, that's what we do on that side. We've got about 40 investments uh, uh, that we have made at this point, uh, about a billion dollars roughly under management and uh, are committed uh, relative to uh, under our management. and. Uh, We've seen some really interesting things. Some of those things, even collaborating with Purdue University. Mm. Yes, and on, this, please. Yeah, and on the other side of the house, the foundation side of the house, as well as our nonprofit that we run, the Cleveland Avenue Foundation for Education Group. Uh, as Don said, they're just two different expressions of our shared vision, supporting entrepreneurs on the one hand and then supporting social innovators on the other hand. We have a focus on education, which is, of course, the lever that we pulled that, you know, why we landed up here now. And we decided we wanted to be able to help young people as they went to and through college, as they got that strong first job out of college. And then as they became professionals in the field of education, how could we best support them in the work that they're doing? That's what we do on the cafe, as we call it for short, on the cafe side of the house. Um, and it really is the same thing that we do on the venture capital side. When you provide entrepreneurs and social innovators with the resources that they need, you just get out of the way and let their genius take center stage. And that's what we've been able to do, Mung. Very blessed to be able to do it. Well, wow, uh, that is fantastic mission that you just uh, summarized for us. And I also love uh, the fact that CAFE as a place for food and beverage is also the acronym for the Cleveland Avenue Foundation for Education, uh, both sides of this same coin as in uplifting everybody's potential, especially as you mentioned, entrepreneurs uh, and entrepreneurs uh, who are women, who are also minorities in that space. Uh, very, very worthwhile. You know, as I continue to uh, ask questions to our two outstanding alum here, if you on the live audience side have any questions, please, as always in this series, type that uh, into the chat box, I think, uh, and we'll get to that in about 10 minutes. So, well, uh, Don, you also, as a university trustee, led a really important effort uh, starting about a year and a half ago, uh, almost two years coming up, I guess, of the uh, Purdue University Board of Trustees uh, led 
equity task force. And a lot of uh, the recommendations that you and the task force put forward have now started to be implemented. You know, I'm proud to say that, for example, in the College of Engineering, uh, we have seen a more than doubling of the number of African American and Black uh, undergraduates admitted and uh, decided to come to uh, Purdue Engineering last fall. Uh, we're tracking the numbers in this ongoing season of admissions, right? Uh, and part of that more than doubling is because the university continued to grow, is enrollment size. But if you just look at the percentage and the yielding rate, those who we admit already, are they picking us? Both doubled exactly uh, last year over the previous many years uh, of the percentages. And part of that is because of our dedicated outreach. Uh, part of that is our added, added investment from the College of Engineering to the Minority Engineering Program, MEP, led by Virginia and her team, and, and Beth uh, Holloway and Alina and uh, many great colleagues. Part of that is also the scholarship, which I'll come to in a minute, and how the university and the College of Engineering uh, double down and augment and uh, amplify the philanthropic giving of these scholarships to attract the students to come here. So there are many other uh, partnership with Morgan State, for example, uh, among many other uh, URM uh, serving universities that we have also initiated. Uh, but let me pause here and ask you a question, uh, Don, that uh, you know, with these and many other activities we are pursuing here, what do you see as the ones that uh, excite you most or where you feel that will be uh, the most effective in achieving the goals that your force set out for us? Well, thank you very much. And, and thanks, for, uh, thanks for the commitment and the, the results that we're beginning to see in the College of Engineering. Uh, as you know, and, and all of the deans really have stepped up um, we had a goal. The goal has, was that, you know, historically, uh, we've hovered around 3% uh, relative to the Black students that are uh, on the Purdue campus. And uh, it's interesting because it also hovers through, you know, faculty, staff numbers. It's an interesting kind of a, a, a number. And I think this concerted effort that we had was in, 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 in three different areas. One was the area of representation. The feeling was that a more diverse university is going to yield more diverse ideas and it's going to create an energy that prepares our students, faculty and staff to live a fuller life. And uh, I will say that Mitch's support and the Board of Trustees support as we embarked upon this journey to be able to enhance that representation along with the experience. It doesn't do any good if we can recruit people to your point, doesn't do any good to accept but not yield them to the university. And part of that yield and, and the retention has to do with what type of experience do you feel Purdue is a place for you? Do you feel you belong? And so we wanted to create a stronger sense of belonging on the university campus as well. And I will tell you, we had over 150 odd people participate as part of the task force. Very diverse group, student leaders from all backgrounds, colors and genders. We had um, a large percentage of, of black students and faculty and staff. We had the deans, we had um, leaders, again, that represented the faculty side of life. And what was very special is collectively, we came up with what became the equity task force recommendations to the board. I am most excited about the fact that what we are starting to do is put our money where our mouth is. Um, of the five strategic areas that we'll focus on as Purdue University over the next uh, five years or so, uh, one of those five is the equity task force recommendation, and it is receiving a higher than pro rata share of the funds that we are raising and the university will contribute. So we're already focusing on recruitment. We're focusing on getting out to high schools and showing what Purdue experience can really be like and the opportunities there. We're already starting to focus on the experience on campus. We're doing things that we haven't done before, involving students in areas we hadn't involved in before, talking to faculty and doing cluster hires. So there's so many different things we've put together. It has been saluted by those who have seen it as one of the most comprehensive uh, plans to address 
uh, what we felt was a challenge. And um, so I'm very excited about, you know, where it will go. Uh, there's a lot of work ahead, as you know, Mom. Uh, but our initial uh, efforts are yielding fruit, and I think they'll continue to. So I'm, uh, I'm quite, quite satisfied. I'm not content, but I'm satisfied with our progress thus far. Yes, Don, we have miles to go. Uh, but yes, we are moving the needle. And uh, hats off, salute to you and your leadership, because I know it was a Herculean effort uh, to uh, put together such a wide range of inputs into actionable steps that we are actually taking and not just talking about it, but walking the walk there. And I remember- Mung, I can tell you if I, if I can just yes, hop please, in please. for several months, yes. uh, there were binders, equity task force binders mm. all over the Thompson household. There were calls on Sunday nights. There were calls on Wednesday afternoons. He lived this work for several months. And I can tell you every piece of his energy went into uh, the task force and getting the best thinking from all of the members of that task force. I was so proud of his leadership on that, uh, but it was, it was a lot of work. And um, I think he poured every ounce of his desire to see things advance as well as his energy to make it happen. Yes, well, well we at Purdue are so blessed to have Don's leadership and uh, we're not to let you down. We're going to keep working on this very important topics. And uh, uh, what I also want to highlight is that uh, we are the founding site of NASB, right? the National Society of Black Engineers. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, and later this month, we're hosting a reception at the annual NASB conference. This year is in Los Angeles. We are funding a large cohort of students and staff and faculty to go there and participate, uh, proudly wearing uh, Purdue it's a logo as the founding site of NASB. And uh, we've uh, seen so many outstanding leaders. You know, one day, uh, you know, they will be the future Lids and Don as well. You know, I remember Aaron Bank, uh, who uh, <laughs> an IE student and uh, well, quarterback on our Purdue uh, football team, and also uh, just an outstanding leader as the first, I think, first uh, African American student government president. And uh, I asked Aaron back then, you know, how do you manage your time? Do you ever get to even take a nap, right? It's just 24 <laughs> seven, amazing talent, amazing people. And Aaron told me he benefits so much from the MEP's uh, uh, academic boot camp. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a minute, but I see Virginia, uh, our leader of the MEP program, just ask Liz a question. What inspired you, Liz, to launch Cleveland Avenue and the work that you do in the greater Chicago community. Hi, Virginia. Thank you for that question. For those of you that may be watching and don't know Virginia, Virginia runs the Minority Engineering Program, the successor to the great Marion Blaylock, who started the Minority Engineering Program at Purdue and what is now the model for programs like it all across the nation. Virginia, what inspired us to launch our foundation was the fact that we had been the beneficiaries of so much um, help from people along the way. So many people whose shoulders we stand on, so many people who reached out to help us and pull us along the way that we felt like we, we owed the debt. Uh, we are just the um, holders of the blessings that God has given us and it's up to us to pass it along. And so we started the foundation to be able to do that, to be able to help the young people that you see on this screen right now and others like them, to be able to help the professionals that are doing the work now, that were teachers and educators when we were young that helped light the pathway for us. There were so many people along our journey that helped us to reach this point that we felt like we owed in return to be able to do that for others. So that's why we did it. And as I said earlier, the work that we focus on is on college attainment, making sure our young people can get to and through college, making sure that they're able to get that significant first job out of college. And then once education professionals have demonstrated the incredible impact they have on the community to be able to recognize them and in the case of one of our initiatives, the 1954 project, 
we are able to award them with $1 million each transformational size funding in recognition of the incredible impact they have in our community and on the education landscape across the nation. So we couldn't be more proud uh, than to be able to do this work. So thank you so much, Virginia, for the question. Well, hey, listen, Virginia, that, I'm sorry, that, Mon, if, if I could. That articulation is so wonderful. Yes, Dom, please. <laughs> You know, it, it is a uh, it is a blessing to Liz's point, but you know the other part of this blessing is Liz because she has focused so so strongly on education as an enabler, and you know I can do what I do and other rest of our team does on the Cleveland Avenue venture capital side and investment side, um, and we we've had some phenomenal impact, no doubt, but I will it 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 pales in comparison. Uh, to the conversations that we have had with others that have been able to move their lives forward from an education perspective um, or people that we've been able to help who have organizations that can impact so many people. And uh, you all, you'll hear a little bit, I'm sure, from Jasmine, Kendall, Zill, and George, but you, you, you just, if you had more time and you really heard these young leaders and what they plan on doing with their life and what they've done already, it, it inspires all of us. We can't do enough. And so, uh, Virginia, we need to offer you our collective thanks as well, because you have been there for our students, our black students, our brown students, students of color. You have been there in a strong way, and we truly appreciate it, and you know we love you. So much. So very much. We also have a, a wonderful question from uh, uh, Barry Caldwell, uh, who is the acting head of our school of industrial engineering. Uh, and uh, uh, Barrett, uh, among the current faculty members, I think uh, was the uh, most senior faculty member uh, among uh, the African-American faculty colleagues here in the college. And uh, as the interim head for our School of Industrial Engineering, he's doing a fabulous job and it's such a pleasure to work with Barrett. And he asked this question. Um, you can see uh, if you are uh, on screen as well, you know, very excited to understand the Cleveland Avenue Cafe combination. And I think Barrett's question is, uh, how about a similar combination in Indianapolis? Uh, maybe uh, centered around Indiana Avenue, the Madam Walker Theater area that uh, we've all been to uh, quite a few times uh, in that neighborhood as a hub of black technology innovation. I, I think it's a I think it's a great point. Now I have Liz speak because she's actually had some interaction with someone that was quite familiar with Madam C. J. Walker, uh, and uh, I want to just real quickly though say Barrett, thank you, thank you, thank you. Most people don't know Barrett is one of the three uh, leaders of faculty. It was him. It was Venetria Patton, and it was uh, Dr. Uh, John Gates who basically uh, took the task of integrating with teams, all of the equity task force points into more salient plans. And so they did a phenomenal job and this was in addition to their day job. So Barrett, thank you for that. And relative to the integration and what can happen in other places and cities, I'll let Liz talk to a part of that and I can speak to uh, the Cast Us Fund as a model as well. That sounds great. One, one thing I will say is that uh, Don and I have been so intentional around the combination of these two things, as Barrett has pointed out so many times. And, and I'm just going to say it, you know, we focus so much on the for profit uh, side of things and making sure that business and industry are held up as they should be as the economic drivers for our nation. And at the same time, so much of the social supports that are required in order to serve as the foundation for our nation, those things that help support people in their lives outside the hours of eight to eight, no more nine to five, outside the hours of eight to eight, those things are held up by the social fabric of our nation. And that's where nonprofit work comes in. And so for us, the intentionality behind that Barrett, I would say the lesson that we've taken away is that not only can you do both and, you must do both and in order to be certain that uh, the entire community is served. And so in our case, we take the education perspective in making sure that not only are entrepreneurs supported 
through education, we're about to launch something called the Entrepreneurial Development and Leadership Institute, which helps our entrepreneurs get the kind of supports they need, depending on what stage they're in, early stage support. How do I even get this started if this is something that I think I want to do all the way to this is a successful business. I, I want to scale it. I want to grow it. I want to have multiple entities. How do I do that? Our EDLI is going to be poised to help our entrepreneurs do that. And at the same time, the cafe is poised to help our social innovators that are running nonprofit organizations that want to grow and scale, sound familiar, that want to broaden their reach of what they're able to do. We do it at the same time. It is not easy. It takes every ounce of energy we have to do it. And yet we know that in order to support the entire community, both are required. So Barrett, I would say just never lose sight of the fact that it is a both and, it's not an either or. Mm -hmm. And well, Barrett, I think on- Just one more question. And oh, okay, go ahead, Mike. Over to you. Uh, and, uh, and that is uh, Don and Liz, you know, in uh, the College of Engineering's effort uh, in access and success, right? Don, I'm just uh, uh, copying and pasting your favorite phrase, access and success in our diversity effort, right? And also in my work as uh, uh, an AVP for the university system, witnessing a lot of the strategic initi initiatives movement. And as Don said, this is one of the five uh, highlighted. Um, there is a, a centerpiece, I think, and that is the philanthropic support uh, from alums such as both of you. And uh, turning now the topic to the Thompson Scholarship Program and the individual students, some of uh, them you see here on screen now as Thompson Scholars. We started this conversation, I think, even pre-COVID, and then COVID happened and then so on. But now I'm so glad that uh, it is a reality thanks to the generosity and the vision from Liz and Don. So my question is, what uh, triggered your thinking in creating this program? And uh, uh, what inspired your action to uh, provide this uh, philanthropic gift, a donation to your alma mater to create the Thompson Scholarship Program? And what do you want to see as a successful execution? And from there, please feel free to introduce some of the Thompson Scholars and uh, uh, interview their thoughts, please. Honey, you want me to take that one? Yeah, you started out. Okay, so when Don and I were students, even before we became students at Purdue, Mung, we were participants in the Minority Introduction to Engineering program called MITE uh, back in 1979, 78, somewhere back there. Um, and the our participation in that program was so incredibly rewarding. It introduced us to engineering, but it also introduced us to the possibility of what college was and what a degree in engineering might look like. But the reality of, of getting that degree also had a financial component to it that made it very difficult for us throughout the time we were there. In my case, I was an out-of-state student, which meant that my tuition was triple that of Don's being an in-state student. And not but for the support of his grandmother who raised him, uh, she wrote me a $600 check and that enabled me to complete my senior year and graduate from Purdue. But for that $600 check, I would not have been able to graduate. We didn't want other students to have to face that same situation, at least not to the best of our ability. And that's why we came up with the Thompson Scholars as a way to support as many students as we could uh, with a substantial scholarship that would lessen the burden of writing that check every semester uh, for their families and enable them to pursue their dreams of being an engineering student. Part of the inspiration for this is a program at Washington University called the Irvin Scholars. And I was so impressed, we were so impressed by the work that they did, the holistic support that they provide for students that we wanted to have something similar at our alma mater and hence the Thompson Scholars. So honey, I'll turn it over to you. You know, I, um, my grandmother and Liz mentioned raised me. She, uh, she grew to be 104 years old. Um, remarkable, remarkable woman. Incredible. And when she was able to help Liz, because we were dating at the time, 
um, it's not like we had a whole lot more than $600. She worked at Airway, which is today's target in the, in the housewares department. Um, but her heart said that's where we should be. And her faith said this is what you should do. And Liz and I are of a, a similar heart and definitely of the same faith. And she, Liz already mentioned, God blessed us to be able to be caretakers for a moment. Uh, of, of some level of, of support that, that could help out some others. And one of the things that I think is so special about this is that what we have found is that in establishing uh, the Thompson Scholars with the help of Virginia and among yourself and Mitch and others, as we establish this, we have benefited a heck of a lot more than I think any of our students. And I don't even know if they know it or not. Um, you all are amazing. Uh, we, we, we smile and we tear up every time you all talk. And so I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves. Um, but I, I want you to tell people, I want people on this line to understand just who you are for a moment, what you're doing now and what you plan on doing, because I think um, you all are the ones that carry all of this forward. Right. And what makes us feel really good is that we know you all will do it. And uh, and that's very special. So I'll ask maybe if, if we start with Jasmine, then Kendall, Jordan, I see Adari joined us, and then Zell. I'm just looking across my screen, you all. So it's <laughs> Jasmine. Hello, I am Jasmine Walker. I'm a senior studying civil engineering with a concentration in architectural, minors in building information modeling and sustainable engineering. Currently, right now, I'm a member of the National Society of Black Engineers at Purdue. I'm also a civil engineering ambassador. I'm part of the Purdue Student Engineering Foundation. I am a pledgee for the Civil Engineering Honor Society. I'm also in the Women Engineering Program. Um, what else? Am I forgetting anything? I'm in a sorority. <laughs> I'm in the ASHRAE branch at Purdue for the American Society of Heating and Refrigerating Engineers. Um, I'm also working for Bechtel right now as a student intern in the engineering program that they have. Um, I'm also a grader for a class, and yeah, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I have free time, but I do enjoy what I do, and I am also in the combined uh, graduate undergraduate course at Purdue, so I'll be getting my master's uh, in spring of 2023, and I yeah, I, I love being a Thompson Scholars, and this is one of the best things that have ever happened to me. We are not playing, y'all. For those of y'all watching, we are not playing. Do you see what we're talking about? We ain't playing here. Okay, Jasmine? Okay. Kendall? Hi, everyone can hear me. Um, well, sorry. Okay, so hi, everyone. My name is Kendall Davis, and I'm a junior majoring in biomedical engineering, and I'm also on the pre-med track. Um, so some of the activities I'm involved in, so I'm currently the, the treasurer of NSBE. So I definitely appreciate the, um, the financial support that we got to attend conference. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, 46 students fully funded going to the NSBE conference. So I, I really believe that, I think that's the, the largest number that have attended from Purdue University. Um, so that's amazing in itself. Uh, and I really appreciate that. Um, so I, I'm also in the, um, well, I've participated in the Algebra by seventh grade program as a tutor, um, so that's AB7G and that's through the minor engineering program. I love that. Um, I am in the, um, sorry, my mind is begging me, but I, I am in the, sorry, give me one moment. <laughs> I am in the, oh, last year I was a, a RA, so a resident assistant. So that's when I had actually received the, the, the scholarship, which is amazing. Again, I got to meet so many students, so many faces, um, talk to so many different people. And finally, uh, I am um, going to be doing research this summer. Uh, it'll be a joint program between the Biomedical Engineering School and the School of um, Indiana University um, Medical School. Um, I'm doing research to, um, okay, as a joint project. And so this is really exciting. The, the scholarship has helped me tremendously. Um, every time I see you all, your faces and talking with you, I get motivated to do even more. Um, and it just gives me encouragement to keep going and keep persevering and pushing through the, the coursework that we have. Thank you, Kendo. Thank you, oh. Kendo. Mr. Jordan with the appetite that does not quit. What's going on? 
<laughs> hey everybody, um, I'm just gonna apologize for the background noise. I'm in my hotel right now, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. So I'm Jordan Lyles. I'm a sophomore in biomedical engineering, and I'm also doing the pre-med track like Kindle. Um, the things I'm involved in on campus are the Minority Engineering Program, NSBE, the Biomedical Eng Engineering Society, and then BMIN, which is the Black Male Excellence Network. And this summer, I was very um, grateful to get the opportunity to, to be an intern for Baxter, um, R&D internship this summer. And I also got the IU Methodist um, shadowing experience um, through Purdue, uh, through the Biomedical Engineering. Um, I see Kendall smiling because she like told me all about it, so appreciate that. And I just want to say how grateful I am for this scholarship. Um, Purdue was obviously my first choice because I did my and all the programs like that. And having this scholarship really helped me go here because I was going to go to a different school because I'm out of state. So I'm really thankful for the opportunity that I'm given. And I'm going to continue to make you guys proud. So thank you very much. We are already <laughs> proud, Jordan. Already proud. All right. Adari, what's going on? I know you're changing the world somewhere, man. What's going on? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so hi, my name is Adari Lewis. I graduated from Purdue in the summer of 2021, so currently working full-time in Chicago at Kimley Horn, so that's kind of what I'm up to now. While I was at Purdue, I was a member of NSBE. I was also an ABG, AB7G tutor as well, so uh, definitely got a lot of value in that. I also was on the Engineers Without Borders team while I was at Purdue. Just want to say I'm very thankful for the scholarship. Definitely helped me get to where I am today, and Definitely is very motivating to help me keep persevering and achieve every goal that I ever, ever dreamed of. We're so proud of you, Odari. So uh, proud of you. Congratulations. And we got to see you in Chicago. Yes. yes. All right. Zill. There's a smile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. Um, um, I am a junior in aerospace engineering here at Purdue, obviously. Um, I am part of PER, the Purdue Electrical Racing Team. Uh, made it to be the manufacturing lead for this year. So that's really nice. I am also part of um, the L-Space NASA writing program. So I've been learning a lot more about writing proposals and how to get into that whole research and development part of the industry. I'm also a volunteer a lot for the VAPS charities happening. And this summer, I have gotten the opportunity to do research at JPL. So that's very exciting. So um, yeah, and I'm very thankful for all of you guys. And it's really nice to see you guys all again. That's great. Well, thank you, Zell, and, and all of you. Uh, we appreciate you all. And I uh, also hope to see you all soon. I'll be sending something out. I'll be on campus pretty soon. I don't know if I can get Ms. Thompson to join me this time. I'll be in for a board meeting. but To come uh, see them, I will. It'll be be time for a dinner again. <laughs> I love it. So, so Mung, I mean, you know, when we talk about what was the motivation, I, I think there's no question about it. Seeing these young people, all of their efforts, the reach that they have for every one of them, there are a hundred more of them yet to come and how much they are motivating to those young people. It, it's just no question that this is what we've been called to do. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is uh, just amazing experience to uh, be able to listen to what they are doing. Uh, in fact, I hope we have 10 minutes to go to listen to a bit of their stories as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, some of you mentioned, you know, hope to make us proud. Well, we already are made so proud because of you here. And you remind us why we're doing what we're doing every single day here as a public land grant institution to uplift everybody's lives. And uh, uh, well, Don and Liz, uh, the, the mic is yours. So feel free to uh, interview some of these amazing Thompson scholars. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'll start. And uh, let me start with Jordan. Jordan, for the people that are watching, I'm sure many of them are engineering alums. Uh, but just take us through a little bit of what your experience has been like as an engineering student. How hard are the classes these days? And um, what is it that you hope to do when you graduate? And how do you think Purdue is going to play a role in that? Okay, well, first of all, it's been a lot harder this year, for sure, being everything in person again. But honestly, I think really the biggest thing that I've taken away from learning at Purdue is just is being like very collaborative, like with people that you work with, because I'm a very stubborn person, I would say. So I've learned over time to become more willing to like help 
like do homework like with more people and like ask for help a lot. So I really think I'm glad that I'm learning to be more collaborative, like with my fellow classmates and my professors. And then also like from learning at Purdue, I think like problem solving because everything is I think very difficult. But I feel like it really helped me prepare. Like pre it prepares me very well for the real world because things aren't just like so, like black and white. It's a lot of like intricacy. So I really think just having the challenging classes and the rigor has really helped me just prepare. And then for like my future plans. So I, like I said earlier, I'm planning on going to medical school after. Well, I'm kind of on the fence right now. So hopefully this summer I can really decide between my internship if I like R&D route or the medical school route. So I'm really focused on just going to medical school right now. And that's obviously like a big goal in itself. And then, yeah. And then I just say like how Purdue prepared me for that. I'd say like how hard and challenging it is and always just putting in like the time to do work. I really think it's going to prepare me well for med school because that's obviously a fee in itself. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Jordan. Don, I'll toss it to you. Okay. Um, uh, my question is actually, um, I'll ask this one of, uh, of, of Jasmine and uh, of Zeal, and either of you can respond or both. The real part is you all just came through an interesting time in COVID. Uh, none of the alumni that are on the screen have any idea. Jordan just alluded to it as to what that meant and what the impact was and what you had to do. And so would you all just give a perspective of what the challenges were and how you all moved through that and where you found opportunities to excel? Because obviously you all continue to do it. So be interested in you all's perspective. I think it'd be beneficial to the alumni. Yeah, I can go first. Um, I think it's kind of, Got kind of lulling into a routine where you don't have a lot of human interaction. I think that was kind of a big like switch into COVID that we had to get used to, you know, going from always having classes in person to seeing your interacting with the professors on a professional and personal level, just being in that interaction uh, face to face, not having that and not being able to interact with your classmates as much and not knowing exactly what the class expectations are because, you know, you're not in class as much and everything like that. So transitioning to that was difficult, but it made it a lot easier to find, you know, people because it's like, okay, we're all in this together, you know, <laughs> we're trying to get through these classes together. We're all going through this together. Let me lean on you and I'll lean on I'll lean on me as well and we helped each other through it um, I know that my professors were more lenient so I got to talk to them more um, it is a lot different coming back in person now you know seeing everybody with the mask or without the mask but it's fun and it was just like an obstacle that we all got through and I really grew from that because you learn what you can do and what you can't wow Zill hey, yeah I'd agree with Jasmine um, engineering is a very collaborative kind of field so when we were all at home and everyone had to kind of fend for themselves for the first few months, it was really hard, especially being a freshman. I had only been in college for about a semester. So I was still getting the hang of college life. And then all of a sudden everything was flipped upside down and like the professors needed help with like Zoom links and everything. So like Jasmine said, we were all really leaning on each other and helping each other out, which was really nice. Thank you, Zill. You know, when, Mung, when you asked Don the question about what it was that he learned at Purdue that he was then able to leverage and problem solving is always at the top of the list, but then very close behind that for me is what all the students have talked about. The notion of being able to leverage whatever resources are available to you uh, in order to get whatever it is you need to get done. Learning how to work with people, Jordan said, learning how to collaborate more. This is what I walked away from Purdue with, understanding how to really maximize all of the resources that were at my fingertips. I just didn't know how to leverage them. And I learned that at Purdue. I want to ask Kendall a question. Kendall, you know, for all of the uh, women alums that are watching, do you feel as though, uh, I know many of the classes that I was in, I was the only woman uh, in a lot of my higher level engineering classes, certainly the only black woman in those classes, many times the only black person in some of those classes. Talk to us a little bit about what your experience has been as a woman in engineering and whether or not you feel like, um, you know, you still feel sometimes uh, a little bit on the outskirts or do you feel completely integrated, uh, different maybe than my experience of two years ago? Yes, <laughs> so I do think the experience might be similar. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm on the outskirts, but it definitely is a different experience getting in the, in the group or in the know of what's happening. 
um, a lot of times when I go into group, I, I already have to come triple prepared, double prepared um, of the material that, that's being presented just so people don't look at me and say, oh, she might not even know this. She doesn't know the answer to this. She's not to that. And so when I do say it, it's a surprise to them, to them, but it, um, it looks, it allows them to see me differently, I guess. Um, and it garners a certain amount of respect because I knew more than them coming into it. Um, and so a lot of times I do, I do think you have to over-prepare as a woman. Uh, you have to over compensate, And that's not always, it's a, it's a little hard sometimes to manage, like time manage um, with that and to um, realize that coming in as a freshman. I was like, oh, I can't just walk in and people just know I'm smart. I have to actually prove myself. I actually have to, to come with the materials and be that it person. Um, and so I think a lot of time here at Purdue, I try to be that it person where people come to me for advice, people come to me for help, for study tips. Um, I think I have been able to accomplish that, especially with the activities that I'm in with like Nesby, MEP. It taught me how to garner those, those resources, how you say, how you said, and use them to my advantage and to maximize my time and effort. Um, so just summarizing it, it's different, um, but you know, I'm not completely on the outskirts, I would say. I love it. Thank you, Kendall. Don? You, you, you all have, um, you know, all of you all, among earlier, you asked me about the equity task force, and I said there were three aspects. I mentioned two, one being get representation, get more diversity on campus, get more bodies that are black and brown on the campus. We want to be able to do that. Um, have more women that are on the campus. We want to be able to continue to do that. And when we do that, the second part was the experience that you all have on campus. All of you are amazing because you've taken much more advantage of those things on campus than either Liz or I had done. The last part was we felt those two things would equal success. So Adari, I'm gonna come to you. And I would say, what is it like now? You graduated, you walk into that job, and it is like, okay, it's a new day. And to Kendall's point, you know, it's now time to prove yourself all over again. You're a Purdue Boilermaker. What difference did that make when you walked in that door? And what difference does it make today? Yeah, so definitely starting something new. As always, it's going to be stressful. You know, you're going to be nervous about it. You know, like you're always like, oh, I don't know if I can handle it. But then, you know, you got to think back all the work that, uh, you know, I've put in over all the years of just grinding and studying, you know, it all comes to fruition now. So you really do have to trust yourself and coming in as a boilermaker, it really does make a difference. People, you know, they, they expect a certain uh, level of respect, a certain level, a certain caliber of work that you're, that you're going to produce. And then that they know that you can handle it. And that it is very much true. So definitely coming here is it's been a, it's been a change, but uh, it's been very welcoming. People have been very kind to me and you know, I've been really enjoying myself so far. Man, well, I know that you will have tremendous impact. I know you're, you're making all of us proud. And I'm sure, you know, having a little money isn't a bad thing either. Well, <laughs> never. Well, never. <laughs> well, it makes do all. tend to make a little bit more than other, uh, other people that are graduating. Hey. So we're very That's right. Hey, for keep that. studying. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Dean, if I may say for the people that are watching us, you know, th this is just a small sample of the students that are at Purdue doing amazing things. And we hope to be able to have more of you join us in order to provide similar opportunities for the countless students that we are not able to help. So please join us uh, in, in providing those opportunities. Please join us, not only with the Thompson Scholars, but in whatever way you choose, uh, because there are so many more Jasmines and Zills, Odaris, Kendalls and Jordans out there. And I think we deserve, we, they deserve our help. So thank you for your consideration on that. Well, I'm glad that Liz, you highlighted that indeed, uh, inspired by outstanding students like the Thompson Scholars that you all just met uh, here uh, in the live audience. Uh, and uh, inspired a lot by what uh, the Board of Trustees and President Mitch Daniels uh, decided to highlight the importance of diversity inclusion here. We have been on the receiving end of many additional philanthropic gifts and donations. Uh, want to particularly highlight Bill Urig uh, and uh, his wife Anastasia Bonas, 
and Bill is an AAE alum. Uh, they gave an outstanding gift uh, last year. Uh, it's a five-year commitment that really also helped move the needle. Uh, so I know we're coming up uh, to the last couple of minutes here, and uh, I want to again thank all of you for participating, and great to see again the Thompson Scholars. It's always a pleasure to get to talk to Liz and Don. I just can't tell you how important your work and uh, your support means to all of us uh, as we strive towards more success in diversity. And uh, uh, give the last minute back to our outstanding alum, Liz and Don Thompson. Dean, thank you so much for having us here today. We simply just want to say to everyone watching, um, you know, what we've been able to do uh, is just lifted by the fact that we're able to do it for these amazing young people. Uh, we are just stewards of the resources and we want to be able to do more of this. We thank you, Dean uh, Mung, for your support. Virginia, we wouldn't be able to do this without you. And last but not least, Marion Blaylock, who started this all for us, mm -hmm. who introduced us to Purdue, who introduced us to the Minority Engineering Program. We appreciate you, Marion. We love you. Uh, and because of you, we are able to do what it is we do today. So thank you all so very much. And I'll turn it over to Don to close us out. Uh, my comments will be very brief uh, to all of our scholars. Uh, handle your business. You know what you're supposed to do. That's right. I like those smiles. Handle your business. You all are you all are even more talented, intellectually competent, and capable uh, than anybody else. Uh, and you need to just know that internally. And uh, we're proud of you. Just keep rolling. Proud. To all of the alumni that are on, I'd ask you just get engaged. Um, get get engaged. If you're not engaged, get re-engaged. You obviously are engaged. You're on here now. But get re-engaged. And the reason I say it is because um, you all didn't have the benefit of hearing it, but many of the students that you see right here may not have been back at Purdue. But for what? A few dollars? And, and we're going to miss out on the brilliance that they are? And, and look, now, I mean, these are future leaders. And so I'd ask all of our alumni, get engaged. It may not be in money. It may be in a visit. It may be in a call. Uh, you, you have no idea how much your support can mean. Just some words of confidence. Um, these young people in front of us are going to be doing that for the next generation that comes right behind us, the next group. Uh, and, and I know that they're already doing. Uh, they're already doing more. Unfortunately, I'm going to say it the way it is. They're doing more than many of us have done, and they're still in school. That's and it. so I challenge all of us. Let's step on up um, and be boilers. And so... Thank you all for attending. Mung, thank you for your leadership. Uh, we appreciate it. Liz, I already thank Virginia, but I'll do it again. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Boiler up. Boiler up. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thompson Scholars. Thank you. We're proud of y'all. Thank you. Okay, take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.